In this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating how to render volumes. I'm not going over volumetric scattering. This video will mainly focus on setting up a mater volume material for Redshift. I'll be using a very simple PyroSim to demonstrate the process. I have this pyro simulation here that I'm going to be using to demonstrate uh, the whole process of setting up a material for volumes. So I'm just going to play the simulation so you can see the smoke, the pyro sim that we're going to be using. Now out of this pyro sim, I'm going to be picking one frame. I'm going to be picking 114 to focus on uh, in order to set up the ma volume material. You can see here, I have a lot of these cheat sheets, these sticky notes all over the network. Th these are parameters that I spend a lot of time tweaking and you don't want to really see me filming the whole process of, of trying every parameter or anything like that. I'm going to be going over the whole process of setting it up the lights and the material. So as you can see here, I don't have any lights and there's no material. Oh, this is the default. Because I used, okay, we're not going to be using this first. Because I used the shelf tool in order to create this pyro sim, but it came with that material, but I'm not going to be using it. So here, render material, the material is blank. Now this is a very simple simulation. If you want to create one yourself, just go to the pyro FX shelf tool and just click this explosion. The only parameter I changed was the buoyancy. Since the purpose of this tutorial is only focusing on the render of volumes, it's so I'm not going to be going over the details of the explosion. So let's start off by adding a light. I'm going to cheat by going to my second camera angle, which is actually the the angle of the light. So I can save a little time. And turn this on. So when you render volumes, it's going to even if you have a light and a camera, it's going to the first time you click render, it it'll be blank. You have to let me just adjust this back. Okay. The key is in the light. Go to the light tab. I'm going to switch this to a spotlight. Oh, actually, aerial light will be fine. But the key is the contribution scale. So let me turn this up and you'll start to see something forming. It's very subtle, but you start to see something in the, in, in the render. So let me make this really, really large starting to get there let me make it really really large there you go you start to see something so that's the key to rendering volumes you need a light and you control the contribution if you want to see the volume you need to control the contribution scale now that we have a light and we can actually see something after rendering let's set up a very basic material to begin with let's go here so if you go RS, there's a Redshift has a volume material that we can use. Now let's go back. The pyro, let's link it. Click the render. Uh, okay, let's go here. Now this is the pyro simulation. What I want to show you for the volume, if you have a pyro simulation, you're going to have a lot of attributes that you can use. These are the density, the velocity, the temperature, the heat, the fuel. Now the interesting ones will be density and temperature and heat. And uh, maybe fuel. I might not use fuel. So these primitives, these are called primitives in volumes, which are data from the simulation from the pyro simulation so this tells us how fast uh, how much density is in each voxel and for volumes they can only store one value one scalar value per per primitive each of these is called primitives so this is one two three four five six seven volume primitives 
just gonna put this on to the side. So the density, we have something here already. You can actually up the density. I'm going to use the density volume primitive to drive the scatter property of the material. So this will render white pixels wherever there is high density volume. Basically where there is a lot of clustering smoke, it'll be more white. And for areas with less smoke, it'll be darker and closer to black. Now for the mission. The mission is where it's gonna glow. So we this is an explosion, so we have a lot of heat. So I put I'm gonna link I'm gonna drive the mission with the heat attribute by plugging in the heat here. Now nothing interesting because we only have black and white. So let's put a few more colors in. After you plug in the, the attribute into the channel in the volume material, it might not update right away even though you're in the rendering mode. Try pressing this render button to uh, force it to update. So if you see something like, it might not happen to you. Uh, I haven't upgraded my Redshift in a while. So if, if you do see something like that, just click this and give it a try. So I'm plugging in these colors and I'm starting to see it form. I'm starting to see color form. So let's plug in one more color. And I'm starting to see orange. So what is this? What does this mean? This heat attribute, obviously it has values. So it, it gives us information where where in the volume it is hot how hot so say i'm this is a voxel right here and it's asking and it has a heat value and the heat value is 0 0.7 because this is a 0 to 1 scale ramp so say it has a heat value of 0 0.7 so it's right here then it what this ramp what this emission ramp tells it to any voxel with a heat value of 0 0.7 should have this color this orange color that i have set right here that's what this ramp is that's how you use it so everything that is hotter everything that has a greater heat value will be whitish and it will s uh, slowly transition to yellowish for other voxels like other voxels that are not as hot that's these yellowish actually let me make this green so you can see this is only for demonstration purposes you can see it's greenish Okay, let me zoom in. It's greenish here. That means these greenish spots is not as hot as the white spots. But it's hotter than the orange spots. Now, I'm going to even change the white color to something like blue. So we can see. So these blue spots we see, they are the hottest. They're the hottest voxels on uh, this volume at the moment. And you might be thinking, what about these other white spots? Well, we do have other properties that we can uh, set up in the material, like the density. So let's give the density a very unique color for the white. Instead of using white, let's use something uh, that we haven't used. So let's see, um, we have green, blue, orange, uh, purple. We, I, haven't, I haven't used purple. So the purple spots, the purple voxels you see rendering right now, that represents the density value, very high density value, uh, of voxels with very high density vo values. Voxels in this 
volume that have high density values. And I told this material to set up high density voxels purple color. So that's what this ramp does. It drives the color by the density values. Now we also have a scatter coefficient. This is sort of like, uh, I think of it as a multiplier because, okay, we have three right now. So look what happens if we, if I change this to a lower value like one, it dims out significantly. So I kind of think of it as a multiplier. So it'll continue to dim, 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 dim all the way till we can't see it. So it, what happens if we put zero? It literally just goes black. But I want to see it clearly. So I put three. So you can think of this as a multiplier, but I'm pretty sure that there's the math is not as simple as that. It, it's probably more complicated than that. But the way that I think of it is and uh making it brighter, making the density more intense or less intense. Now you might ask like, how do I know where to put the heat attribute? Like how do I uh, know that it goes into the emission? Or how do I know that the density goes into the scatter channel? Well, you don't, you, you can try it out because try it out because you might, uh, you might have a different effect in mind. Maybe you don't want to do an explosion. Maybe you want to do an explosion simulation, but you want it to look like it's um, a flare, a flare gun that is a bright color in the sky or uh, signal smokes that is not your average fire. Like that has color to indicate an SOS uh, signal. So you can actually, it, the only way you know what it looks like is by trying it out. So let's, let's give this a try. Let's, let's put a density into the emission and then put the heat into the scatter channel. So I'm just going to turn it around just to see what it looks like. So this looks pretty weird, <laughs> but if you didn't try it, you would never know. I'm going to lower down this. Let's see if I can make this a little better. So what I'm trying to say is you have to try it in order to see what it looks like. You, you, in order to get that effect you want, you have to try these parameters. It's like, say we don't want the heat or the density. I want the temperature. I want to try the temperature and plug it in here. The temperature around, all around, surrounding the, the smoke, the explosion, has an average value around here because most of this is orange-ish yellow actually orange-ish yellow so around here ish i guess so i'm guessing most of this orange-ish yellow uh our surrounding area is around 0 0.73 ish temperature five ish maybe so three quarters the hottest spots the hottest temperatures is in the base of the explosion, which makes sense. Go over to the simulation. Pyro. If you go into the simulation in your smoke object, guides, visualization, there are different attributes that you can actually uh, see if you enable them. So in the 3D viewport, you start to see the density. The white is the density and it gets, the black is the less dense. So most of the density is concentrated on the base of the explosion, which makes sense because that's where all the smoke emits from. It's all it, where it's exploding from. So it would be a lot more dense here than it would be up here because it puffs up. It sort of disperses when it gets higher. So let's take a look at temperature. Oh, here it is. The temperature, ah, 
So we start to see something very similar to our material setup. So this guide's visualiz visualization will give us an idea of what the simulation attribute uh, values are at that particular frame. So it's really, the temperatures is really hot in the middle here because it's white. And then it, the temperature sort of, the, the explosion sort of heats up everything around it. So that's why the temp, this is all yellowish. The bluish is here, which is, if you remember correctly, if I go back, the blue is the hottest temperature. It's, sorry, it's the highest temperature. It's the highest temperature here. So that's here, which is the base of the explosion. Absorption is similar to transparency. By sliding the black peg over to the right, this volume material tells redshift to make the black more visible. But seeing black means that redshift is rendering nothing because it's black, blending with my background. You'll see that a lot of the smoke gets cut off. The white peg starts off on the right, which means all the smoke that is white is very visible. But if we slide the white peg over to the right, this volume material tells redshift to make the white less opaque, less visible. And thus we see the entire cloud of smoke dim in general, because seeing less white means you see less. So this is the reverse effect of the black peg. But all this is relative to my background. Since my background is black, when you see more of the black pixels, it means you see more of the background because it blends in. And if you see less of the white pixels, you see less of everything because all the colors have a bit of white values in it. By adjusting the absorption coefficient, by increasing the value will make the volume more opaque, more thicker, less transparent because less light is allowed to go through the pyro volume. You start to see the smoke more defined and we start to see outlines of the smoke. Although it looks like the smoke has gone dimmer, but if you look closer, you see more of the clusters of the smoke start forming. We see more of the shape of the smoke as we increase this coefficient. It looks like the smoke gets a lot thicker. I'm going to start filling in the rest of the parameters in the material using the sticky note cheat sheet so I get the same look I showed at the beginning of the video. If I lower this, keep lowering it, it'll get brighter and brighter and brighter. So if this is what you are looking for, or you could change this. So this is what I mean by it's really fun playing around, setting up materials for the pyro or a uh, volume because you get really beautiful results very quickly I'm gonna leave it like this this looks pretty nice as for the light I'm gonna give it a soft yellowish light that looks pretty good you could just leave it at white it'll look pretty nice like that I'm gonna give it yellow darkish. So sort of whitish with yeah, there you go. So if this could be dust with um from the explosion, that if the explosion had yellowish powder materials that exploded from it and so it, the dust is dispersing from the top. I'm going to upload this Houdini hip file and share it with everyone. Unfortunately, I can't share the Redshift material. It goes against the license agreement. So the hip file I'm sharing will only contain the pyro sim along with all my sticky note cheat sheets. You can recreate the same look I got in this video by plugging in the same parameters into your own Redshift volume material. If you're interested, feel free to download this hip file at this link. I'll post a link in the description as well. It's a lot of fun adjusting the material colors and properties. You're going to have a lot of pretty pyro images to share on your social media. Try using different colors that you like and be brave and try different volume primitives. I didn't use the fuel primitive, so maybe that's a good place to experiment and see what you can achieve with it. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.